Fazia Kufi is here. She is uh, the first female MP in Afghanistan, was elected in 2005. She plans to run for president, I think, in, in 2014. True. Yes. I'm, I'm hoping to run. Let's go to when you met your husband, Hamid, because that was a very interesting part of this book about mm -hmm. the relationship uh, between uh, your brothers and yourself and when you decide to marry or fall in love and, and all the routine around that. It's certainly not like here. <laughs> yes, um, it's, uh, I, I can feel it that it's uh, a bit uh, disconnected with the life of you people here. Mm. But, we, uh, but I have been through, not only me, but hundreds and thousands of women in Afghanistan and men have been through, uh, through this life, but um, still they, they keep moving. And you know, there is this, um, um, I would say there is this um, moral connection with, uh, with each other and we feel each other's mm -hmm. life. My case is perhaps a success because then I came to politics. Now on my husband, actually, yes, I first met him when he came. Well, he, usually they send proposal, um, a marriage proposal to their family and once the family agreed to, you know, for, for the two a couple to get married, then after the engagement, they can see each other. Um, although it's changing now with the technology and like telephone, mobiles and internet right. and everything, mm -hmm. it's changing now. But by then, uh, the only telephone communication was landline. And most of families even didn't have that. There was no mobile, I mean, in 1996, mm -hmm. seven. So he first came to the hospital when my mother was in the hospital and I was with her to take care of her. And that was the, the, the time that she died, I think a month later. She died due to that heart disease. Yes. Um, so um, I was in the hospital taking care of my mother and he came with a group of other, his friends, to see my mother. And um, per perhaps basically to see me, but also to see my mother. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, well, it was it and then it finished. When my mother passed away, I absolutely was down and I didn't even know who was around me in the world because somebody who was connected with me for 18 years, um, more or less I was almost 18 years when my mother passed away. I was connected with her so much that we, you know, always stay with each other, um, you know, share the same bed, um, eat with each other and like, she was my everything, my mm -hmm. backbone. And for her perhaps I was her hope for the future. So when she passed away, I had no hope to, to get to normal life again. And it was Hamid actually who took me out of this life. Like, mm. you know, I would then start going to university back and he was the one who came to my way and, you know. Yes, and uh, with the approval eventually of your family and, and all of that, and then Hamid was arrested. Arrested why? When he was put in jail? Mm. Just well, because they the could arrest him? Why? Well, actually, um, um, we got married during Taliban. That was the time mm -hmm. that, um, because there was a lot of security, and security for the woman in particular, right. because they were victim of rape, you know, anything. Um, and the rape, if a woman is raped in Afghanistan, no one will marry her. Of course not. But if she is a young girl, for instance. Um, so for that, my family decided to, you know, agree on, on our marriage, mm -hmm. which they were not before. Right. Because of the social differences, um, my husband and I had, like, sh he was coming from a middle class family, mm -hmm. rather, um, or a, a, a low class family, and, but they were educated all, um, an intellectual family. Um, so that was the time they decided to, uh, you know, agree on our marriage, and we got married, and um, it, uh, a marriage under Taliban was not something of a fan for me, because I, it was not something that I actually wanted. I wanted to marry in more modern um, style that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Of course. But it was like, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the house, uh, no music, um, no filming, nothing. Uh, and I think uh, that was also the sad part of that history uh, in Afghanistan that many women, I mean, it happens once sure. in your life. You know, your marriage is only a one time perhaps issue mm -hmm. in your life, in, in our countries at least. And Hamid, the love of your life, and, and when he died uh, from tuberculosis, was it lung? Yeah, so he uh, was arrested by Taliban in our house because he, they come to look for my brother, mm. who was a politician. And weapons? With weapons and everything. Um, mm. the, you, know, I mean, you know how it feels when you're mm. like in your first days of your marriage and they arrest your house and they came to, um, to, to, to find my brother and they couldn't find him, so they took Hamid. Um, and he was in prison for three months. Well, once he, they took him and he, they released him in the next morning because they could find no evidence. 
Next, um, next they, they took him and they put him in, um, not next, a few, few weeks later, they put him and they, they put him in jail for three, three to four months. Right. And um, he got tuberculosis from that uh, prison because there was a lot of torture and, mm -hmm. you know, poor nutrition and all of this. And, and, but he died in 2003 due to that disease mm -hmm. because um, the treatment was not regular. Like we had treatment once and then um, the roads were blocked by Taliban. Yes. So we couldn't access doctors. No, and in, in Afghanistan, my understanding is that uh, a female cannot be treated by a female doctor, or how does that work? It, no, it's changed now. It's, it's changed uh, now. Yeah. A female can go to a male doctor, and a male can go to a female doctor. Go to a doctor. female doctor. Uh, some say America, many say America, has forced democracy on Afghanistan. You say not necessarily so. Well, uh, 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 unfortunately, this is a misunderstanding. Many people in the Western world think that Afghanistan is not a democrat nation. Mm. There is a difference between having democratic institutions or having a democratic nation. Afghan people are a democrat mindset people, but they didn't have the opportunity to demo demonstrate that, that democracy in their institutions, like have election, have parliament, you know, mm -hmm. their voices to be heard, mm -hmm. because there was always weapon and gun in power. Yes, but and their military. Mind, and military. Uh, their, but their mind was always, um, you know, Democrat mind. Right. Even when my father was a member of parliament, 40 years back, we had a parliament, democracy decade. There was women who were member of parliament. There were women who were ministers. Mm -hmm. And my father actually by then used to work with local councils, like he created local councils. That was a sign of like democracy because he wanted to share power with his people, you know, consult them and involve them in the process. I would say that perhaps because people didn't have the uh, opportunity to, to establish institutions, international community, when they came to Afghanistan, they helped people of Afghanistan establish institutions like parliament, like we have mm -hmm. now 249 members out of which 69 are, are women. But they didn't, you know, in terms of their mindset, they all want to deserve the basic, basic human rights and democracy as you people do. So we cannot so say that. So in your heart and soul, uh, democracy, not if you're in the Taliban, but as you suggest in here, like some of the young men uh, who joined Taliban did it for survival. Exactly. Not necessarily on the side of the Taliban. They Ideology needed to survive. Mm. Uh, General Massoud, uh, he warned President Bush about 9-11, tell me about that. Well, he, uh, it's an interesting uh, chain of uh, his uh, killing, and assassination, and 11 September attack, because he went to European Parliament in April, and he said to European, in the European Parliament that terrorism is today in our board, uh, border, tomorrow I will warn you that it will come to your borders. And it, and it exactly happen, happened a few, few months later because mm -hmm. he was killed in 9 September mm -hmm. and the 11 September attack happened two days later. That was like a back-to-back -back, um, organized uh, plan that when they wanted to finish him because he was the one resisting Taliban right. and their uh, government. Um, although he was a Muslim, I mean he was a Mujahid Muslim. I mean, why, why? The question for me is now, what was the difference between Mujahideen in terms of their own understanding of Islam and Taliban? Because they were all coming from Islamic background. Why Taliban had to stand against uh, Mujahideen and fight? Mm -hmm. You know, if they were really yes. for Islamic values, what was the difference between the, these two? They were Mujahideen who were fighting the Soviets and they defeated the Soviets. Mm -hmm. If Taliban are not like uh, political babies of different countries in the region. Why they fought Mujahideen? What was the difference between their political belief? Mm -hmm. uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and a very poignant question. Uh, for you to write this, and I know you wrote it with a, a journalist from Al Jazeera, a respected a BBC journalist, uh, how did it change how you feel about uh, the fight for democracy in your country, for human rights, for women's rights? How did it change you, or did it? Uh, well, it changed me a lot. First of all, by writing this book, it's a therapy. Like you share your story mm -hmm. to others, and and you know you're sure that some people will um, will hear your story. And since I have written this book in many c countries, I receive a lot of um, good receptive. Like people tell me, write me that, you know, we heard your voice, and it certainly changed so many perspectives about Afghanistan. But the important thing above all is that I wanted to demonstrate a different face of Afghanistan, which is not a country mm -hmm. of war and terrorism only, but a country of culture, values, mm -hmm. a country of um, you know, uh, strength. And that strength doesn't only come from men, but for, from women right. as well. And do you fear the Taliban will come back? Yes. 
That's the main concern and fear I have. If everything would change. If you people in the world forget of Afghanistan, thinking that you know it's a mission accomplished, mm. or thinking that um, Afghan it's a civil war in Afghanistan, let, mm -hmm. let Afghans to deal with this themselves, uh, that will be a mistake. Because um, I remember, I mean, we have a lot of um, comments on the way that you people improve your interventions in Afghanistan, but that doesn't mean that Afghans oppose your presence in Afghanistan and your support. Because I know, as somebody who lived in Afghanistan, and mm -hmm. I will argue this, that how important it is to be involved in Afghanistan. What could be the negative consequences of forgetting Afghanistan once again? And Afghanistan is changed to a safe haven for terrorism once again. I thank you for writing this. And you'll thank be you. speaking tonight at the K. Meek Center in West Vancouver at 7.30. And there's a lunch at the Vancouver Club at 11.45. I thank you. An honor to meet you. Pleasure is mine. Fazia Kufi, Letters to My Daughters.